What's up guys? I'm here with my friend Lisa. She's gonna be modeling for us and my friend Yuli who's helping me out behind the camera. Um, today we're gonna be looking at my favorite lens which is the Ivascope 1.5 times anamorphic. Um, I've been shooting with this for about two months now and I've been very impressed with it. So I've decided to get another one to complement this one in the near future. But we'll talk about that later on. Um, so yeah, let's get this uh, test going on. This is a 1.5 times stretch anamorphic lens, specifically designed for full frame sensors with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. For those of us that may not know, there are several different stretch ratios. The common ones are two times, 1.5 times, and 1.33 times stretch. In a nutshell, the higher the number, the more character and distortion there is, the more filmic it'll look. Here's a comparison what the stretch ratio looks like on a 16 by nine sensor. A 1.33 times stretch gets you around a two by 41 aspect ratio when de-squeezed in post. The caveat of a 1.33 stretch gets you the least amount of character in the lens. A 2 times stretch gets you around a 3 by 56 aspect ratio which is pretty wide. You get a lot more anamorphic characters but it also seems like you lost a lot of your image because it's so thin on screen. With a 1.5 times stretch, you get around a 2 by 67 aspect ratio, which I think is the best balance on a 16 by 9 sensor. You get enough character in the lens and the image isn't too thin. This is also a single focus anamorphic, which means you don't need to buy a separate focusing module to attach in front of the lens in order to be able to focus with your lens. With the Ivoscope, all you have to do is set your taking lens to infinity and then pull focus with your ivoscope. It has a 190 degree focus throw so you can focus more precise. The front thread is an 82 millimeter and the rear thread is a 52 millimeter. The one that I have has a 32 millimeter rear element but the most current version which is the amber coated one has a 38 millimeter rear element. The build quality feels great. It's all metal. It has a little bit of heft to it. It weighs 724 grams, but it's not weatherproof, so I wouldn't recommend shooting with it in the rain for an extended amount of time. I did shoot with this lens a couple of times when it was drizzling outside, and somehow a rain droplet got into the rear element. It dried up, and now there's a small water spot inside the rear element. I'm not sure how to get that out or clean it without taking apart the lens, and since this is an expensive lens, I don't really want to take it apart so yeah if you're gonna be shooting out and it's raining or it's wet just be cautious so that it's not waterproof it also has a non-rotating front element which means you can put a matte box and filters on the front without having to worry about it you know rotating the one I have is the blue coating which means it has blue flares there's also a yellow amber and purple coating that I've seen people have as I mentioned earlier I do plan on getting a second one which is the amber or yellow coating to complement my blue flare anamorphic Yellow and blue are complementary colors which make a great fit. Another reason why I got this lens instead of an actual lens made to be mounted straight to a camera is that with an adapter like this, you have more focal lengths available to you with the different taking lens that you can put behind it. And not only do you get the character of the Ivoscope, but also the character of the taking lens. And if you're using vintage lenses, they tend to have more characters because of wear and tear, aging, deformities, and deficiencies from manufacturing and whatnot. The optimal focal length for the Ivoscope is a 50 to 90 millimeter. You can go over 90 millimeters, but you're gonna have to stop down on your aperture to get a sharper image. The taking lens that I've been shooting with the Ivoscope are the Konica 40 millimeter, the Minolta 45 and 50 millimeter, the Helios 44M 58 millimeter, the Helios 44 II 58 millimeter, the Sony 85 millimeter, the Minolta 100mm, the Minolta 135mm, and the Minolta 50-135 zoom. My favorite combo with the Ivoscope among the lenses that I've been using is the Minolta 45mm and the Helios 44M 58mm. I noticed that I tended to gravitate to those focal lengths. When I bought this lens in August 2020, it was around 2700 US dollars, but it came out to be a little under 3000 because I had to pay import and duty tax. That might sound a lot, but when I consider the amount I spend for a more DIY setup, the time I spent looking for parts on eBay, the waiting, the building, the price of the Ivoscope outweighs all that, at least to me. I shot these footage with A7S 3 at 4K using the Atomos Ninja 5 recording in ProRes RAW. 
The Iviscope does come with a lens support, but doesn't come with the nylon screws. You have to unscrew the nylon screws from your alignment ring and put them on the lens support. I wish they would just include three nylon screws with the lens support, plus three additional screws in case you damage or lose one of them. Now that we've covered that, let's move on to the test footage and then the b-roll. These aren't scientific or exhaustive tests, but it's something I look for and consider when shooting, and I hope you find them helpful as well.
able to get sharp images at f2.8 but the best results were around f4 to f8 using the optimal focal lengths. The widest I was able to shoot before it vignetted was the 40mm with the Konica but it did slightly vignette when close focused or when you stop down your aperture. It also vignetted on the Sony 85mm when you stop down your aperture and on the Minolta 50 to 135 zoom. I'm not quite sure exactly why but it probably has something to do with the lens elements are grouped together and how big the lens elements are in those lenses. I also didn't take too much time with the lens flares since there are just a lot of variations to them depending on the light source distance lenses and whatnot so I've just put together footage of the flares I've had when shooting with this lens before we get into the next footage I just wanted to preface it by saying I tried to switch it up with as many different shots different lenses and different lighting conditions I do a lot of run and gun and I am going to take this lens with me when I go back and travel whenever the world opens back up even when I'm shooting short films music videos promos I like to work very quickly and efficiently with a splinter crew and with this lens I was able to do that. One last thing, I wasn't able to balance the Ivascope on the Weevil S. I am using the DJI RS2 gimbal. So yeah, here's some b-roll and what you can achieve with the Ivascope.
final thoughts on this lens is that I really love it. This is pretty much my favorite lens to shoot with in my arsenal. I hope Iviscope keeps progressing with the design and make it better with each iteration. I also want to see a red coating or a neutral coating. So whatever light it hits, the flares will be that color of the light. I did buy the DJI 3D focus module and I wanted to include it in this video but it hasn't arrived yet. So yeah, I'll be making a separate video on that. I'm also going to try out the Canon 85mm FD because I thought that the Sony 85 wasn't that sharp throughout so yeah I'm trying to look for another 85. If you found this helpful or enjoyed it please like subscribe and hit that bell button and share it with people who may find this helpful. I really appreciate the support if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments below. This is Eddie signing out I'll see you guys next time. Peace.